much has already been achieved in the in the Sahel and elsewhere in Africa in terms of building agroforestry systems. But much more remains to be done. And our point is that we will try to indicate to you how we will try to scale up existing successes, which is the major challenge of what we are now calling the African Regreening Initiatives, which has just started. But before going into some details, I would like to say some nice words about IFRI. Um, the reason is that in the last few months, uh, Melinda Smale and Craig Tappen and I have gone through a very intensive process together with David Spielman of IFPRI to write one of the cases for the, for the Millions Fed book. And it was a very constructive process, I must say. And I think that, that I, I, I do not understand how David Spielman has been able to survive this, this whole exercise because he has been dealing with 19 or 20 case studies we were just one of the 20, and answers always got to us uh, within 24 hours. And uh, I, was, I must say that I was completely astonished how he, how he did it. And uh, we were really grilled by external reviewers, both external reviewers organized by IFPRI as well as external reviewers from the United States Geological Survey. So really all the data that we uh, presented, we were forced to defend ourselves and to, to underpin the various data. So we have come up with interesting, let's say, hard data about 5 million hectares of, of on-farm regreening, building agroforestry systems in Niger, 200 million new trees over the, last, over the last 20 years, poverty reduction, adaptation to climate change, increased household food security, and you can name it. It's really building agroforestry systems clearly is the single stone with which you can kill many birds at the same time. So much has been done, but much more remains to be done. So that's what we are going to talk about. Uh, so there will be a bit of English and French text, but, but first of all, um, how are we going to try to scale up? Well, we have various ways to try to go about it. Farmer-to-farmer -farmer visits, adapting national policies, mobilizing media attention, use rural radio, a web alliance for regreening in Africa, creating a process and a movement, and private sector funding. We'll tell you about some of the more details. Mathieu. Well, je pense que M. Chris a tout dit, il a tout résumé. Euh... <laughs> I've said everything. Okay. Bon, si, comme il a dit, il y a, il y a eu des succès convaincus et qui assurent la sécurité alimentaire, qui également euh, permet de, euh, de fertiliser les sols et qui puisse être une euh, technologie adaptée pour, le, pour la lutte contre le changement climatique, et nous pensons qu'à partir de là, c'est une technologie qu'il faut diffuser à grande échelle. Et nous bâtissons notre stratégie de diffusion là sur plusieurs axes. Un des axes le plus important et le plus pragmatique, c'est des visites interpaysans et interpays. Parce que nous avons vu que euh, les producteurs apprennent mieux entre eux quand, 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 quand l'explication vient de leurs collègues. Là, ça les, ça, les, ça les pénètre plus que quand c'est un technicien qui vient de loin et qui vient tenter de les convaincre. Là, il a besoin de vérifier avant d'accepter. I will give a bit of a liberal translation and sometimes slightly shorter, but, but uh, it is a well-known fact that farmer-to-farmer -farmer visits are a proven tool to, to get messages across to, for learning between farmers. Farmers accept managers from their fellow farmers much quicker than they will accept messages from outside, experts coming from outside. So this is a well-known tool, and it's not only about visits to farmers just in adjacent villages, it can also be village, uh, visits across the border in another country to get the inspiration. Alors, euh, le second axe, c'est beaucoup plus euh, politique. Et là, nous avons besoin euh, des hommes très forts. Ici, nous, nous bâtissons notre euh, plaidoyer au niveau des de, de, de décideurs politiques, administratifs. Et une fois que euh, et, et ça s'est accepté, la descente maintenant au niveau de la base est beaucoup plus acceptée et ça peut convaincre à plus euh, d'un. So only, only grassroots activities is not sufficient. You also need to change your, and to adapt your national policies and legislation. So we have found some champions, and for instance in Burkina Faso, one of our champions is the Minister of Agriculture, but also Mr. Hama Arbadiallo, who used to be the Executive Secretary of the UNCCD, and who is now Vice President of the National Assembly, and who a long time ago didn't want to hear so much about success stories, but now he has become a lot more open to success stories also. And his region is one of the most degraded of, of Burkina Faso. And we have chosen it also as one of the regions for intervention. There the spiral of degradation is still going down. And if we can manage to 
create some success in that area, we will succeed everywhere. So what we also try to do is to mobilize media uh, for this. There have been articles, for instance, in the national... in, in uh, What's your big newspaper here? The New York Times, uh, in, in February 2007 about Niger, a front-page front article telling the story about Niger. Here I'm showing to Yakuba, uh, the National Geographic of September 2008, which had, had a feature story about the importance of soils for agricultural production, and it extensively quoted Yakuba. So I showed him the parts where attention was paid to Yakuba, and uh, of course that is, that is good that he has it in his hands. There was an English version of it, and a Chinese version, a Japanese version. So tens of millions of copies were spread around the world, giving this kind of information. Alors, l'autre uh, axe important également, c'est les radios locaux. C'est une des de voies qui permet aux au, au producteurs de s'exprimer et en langue locale, et qui permet à plusieurs milliers de, 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 de auditeurs de suivre et d'écouter et de poser des questions et pour un éventuel adoption de la technologie proposée. So one of our actions will also be to, to have as many radio, rural radio programs as possible because farmers systematically listen to the rural radio and to give the floor to those farmers who have already done the job and who can share their experience with other farmers. It's a very efficient way to get the messages across. Um, there is another active thing that we are going to do. We are now in the process of what we call setting up a web alliance for regreening in Africa. Um, the web is increasingly accessible, although not yet everywhere. But let me tell you how we try to do this. Uh, this is just a picture we took three weeks ago in Burkina Faso. Many young people, this is at a secondary school, where they were using, trying to use internet for various purposes. It's also about... It's not only about internet, it's also about using mobile phones. We find villages where 100% of the families have a, have a mobile phone in the family. So we are going to use that uh, to, to share messages. Now here, don't look at the old man on the left side, but you see Mathieu Wedrogo in his boo-boo. <laughs> you see Yakuba Sawadago uh, in the middle. And you see a person on the right-hand side who has probably influenced your life more than Bill Gates. Does anyone in the room have any idea who the person on the right-hand side is? <laughs> That's interesting. Sir Tim Berners-Lee. Does anybody have a clue who Sir Tim Berners-Lee is and what he stands for? He is the inventor of the World Wide Web. And last week he got an honorary doctorate at our university in Amsterdam. And this is the press conference after the symposium we had about regreening Africa. And Sir Tim is standing now squarely behind this initiative and what we are doing, we have at our Faculty of Science a network institute with a lot of clever people about informatics and we have the World Wide Web Foundation of Sir Tim Berners-Lee and we have our Center for International Cooperation and we join hands to together make a web alliance for regreening in Africa to share information as widely as possible, relevant information about regreening, and to, uh, to make it accessible to farmers groups, and also to give farmers groups an opportunity to upload the information whenever possible. Here are some of the players, and you recognize uh, uh, Jakuba, uh, Mathieu, amongst others. So, African regreening initiatives, is this about creating a big project and a big empire? No, it is not. That is not our intention. What we would like to do, is to create a process and a movement. What we would like to achieve is that various organizations are pointing their noses into the same direction. Start to promote agro, building the building and the development of agroforestry systems in Africa and maybe also later outside of Africa. The current activities have started in Burkina Faso and Mali and Mathieu is the director of the Burkina Initiative. There will soon be expansion to, to Ethiopia and Niger. One of our partners is World Vision Australia and they already have on-the-ground activities with building agroforestry systems in Ethiopia, Ghana, Mali, Senegal and Chad. It is not about planting trees, that will be shown also by Laranu later. Mm -hmm. It is about protecting and managing spontaneous on-farm regeneration. Very low cost, very efficient. Care Denmark has just decided to fund an agroforestry project in, uh, in, in Niger also. Question is, who wants to join? 
Yesterday, I had a discussion with somebody from Oxfam America who said, we are going to provide seed money for starting such activities in, uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, in two weeks' time, we will have a meeting in London with Oxfam America, Oxfam UK, Oxfam Netherlands, to talk about how can we, can we contribute to such an initiative. Everybody can get on board. <laughs> and you can use your own means as much as possible to do it. Join us. It's an interesting journey. Voilà, donc nous pensons que euh, euh, cette initiative contribuerait énormément à améliorer euh, la vie de tant de milliers euh, des hommes et des femmes dans, ce, dans cette Afrique-là. Tant de millions ah, Tant de millions. <rire> <rire> OK. Uh, what, what happened, uh, and that is part of the hard data, uh, hundreds of thousands of farm families in, for instance, Niger, are already involved in this process. And we are uncovering more and more farmers small, on a small scale and on a larger scale in Mali and in Burkina Faso and elsewhere who have already done it. The point is, it sometimes escapes our attention. We do not observe it because we do not know what to look for. Just, I gave the example a short while ago before this meeting started. We traveled around in Mali with a very famous soil scientist, Malian soil scientist, the best of the best. And after two weeks he said, I know how to read soils. I've forgotten to look at the age of the trees growing on these soils. I've become a lot more optimistic now than I was before I began this trip. And I think it's a matter of, let's say, knowing the concept and you suddenly see. But join us in the action. Merci. <laughs>